Hello and welcome to Maker Stories. We haven't done this in a long time. So uh, if I seem a little awkward or fidgety to you, that's uh, probably why. I'm Deepika, founder of Pattern Review. And today we have with us a very special guest. Her name is Anjuri, Anjuri um, Halder. And did I pronounce that correctly? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And she is the or owner and founder of Be Threadly. She loves sewing. She loves embroidery. This her website is a line of embroidered iron on patches. You can also find her sewing garment for herself and her adorable little daughter. And I've enjoyed seeing her journey on Pattern Review and on Instagram. So I invited her to be a part of our special series, Maker Stories, in which she shares what inspires her, what she loves to do, tell us a little bit about her business, and we can hopefully promote her and get the word out there. And uh, yeah, Anjuri, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for having me. All right. Are you ready? I <laughs> did send her uh, a list of questions, which we're going to be um, talking about. In a, but I always love that these conversations flow very naturally. And it, I want all of our listeners and um, readers. No, they're not readers. There's going to be listeners and watchers to feel like um, we're with you in your sewing room. So if you're sewing something, um, hand sewing or machine sewing, we are so grateful that we can be a part of that journey. So Anjuri, tell me a little bit about your background and how you learned to sew. Um, okay. Uh, background, I guess I can start from the beginning. Um, I'm an immigrant family, uh, first generation immigrant to the to this country, US. And so, but I was raised here for most of my life. So I pretty much straddled both the American culture and the Indian culture most of my life. And it's even more so like trying to figure out how to, what to pass down to my daughter. Um, but being an immigrant family, the focus was always math and science. Oh my God. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> I have a 12 year old daughter. So um <laughs> no 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 questions there <laughs> yeah definitely right I get it yeah um my dad was an engineer uh so I kind of followed into his footsteps um I became a computer engineer studied that in college um my mom was at home with us um when she came to when we came to this country she was a professor before um so I was around and exposed to sewing because of her. She, like, I would watch her. It was just magical. Like, I would just watch her cut out the, do all these measurements on newspapers and old newspapers and just cut out something. And then, like, the next day, I would have a dress. Wow. It was just perfect. Like, she she knew what to do. She didn't. She didn't really like making sleeves, I think, because most of my dresses <laughs> <just leave. laughs> sleeves are hard. Most people sleeves don't realize hard. because there's a lot of movement which is happening, yeah. right? Right. And I didn't understand that until I started sewing myself. <laughs> I was like, why? Why do I always get sleeveless dresses? Yeah, I always layer. I always have. Um, I almost always wear sleeveless clothes, and yeah. then I just layer up. There you go. There you go. <laughs> But yeah, like even though I was exposed, I was never really interested in sewing myself. Um, I I tried sewing a skirt once. Um, my mom took me to a store called G Street, and they would have these like two dollar fifty per yard, like this ginormous pile of fabric that you'd have to sift through. Uh, we got a pattern, we got the fabric. And I, I mean, it was a simple gathered skirt, so it should have been okay, but I didn't like how it looked at the end. 
so I just never finished it. Um, and that was, I think that was like pre-college. So a lot of years go by and I'm working as a software programmer by that time. And a friend of mine is getting married and she asks me to be part of her wedding party. And so she has this themed wedding and each bridesmaid is a different um, decade. And oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so that my decade was fun. the 1950s, the poodle skirt, like the big poof. Oh my God, I love skirt. the 50s. I love the 50s. <laughs> so I got this, so I bought, so I bought my dress and then I was looking to buy a crin crinoline slip. I can never say that name correctly. Um, and so I could wear the dress later, you know, without the slip. And something happened, like in the search results, I was like, I see how to make your own crinoline slip. And I don't know why I decided that was the thing that I needed to do. <laughs> Well, you never know, and you caught the what? bug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what happened, but I was like, I think I can make this. It shouldn't be too hard, right? <laughs> so I go. I didn't even have a sewing machine at that point. Oh so wow! I go, <laughs> and I buy a sewing machine off Craigslist. Um, I don't even know if they're around anymore. Yeah. They are. They, they are. are. Yeah, okay. Craigslist is very much around. Okay. Um, so Craigslist sixty dollars sewing machine is very like simple. Um, I had to get help to make and to figure out what fabric to get and everything. And so I make this crinoline slip, and it's, I mean, it works, but it doesn't look pretty. <laughs> but it's supposed um, to be inside, though, right? And it's supposed to be inside, so yeah. it didn't matter, right? Yeah. Um, but. After that, like, I don't know what, it, I guess, the sewing itch had started. And um, I so started sewing random things, like, mostly, like, taking what I already had and changing it up a little bit. Um, I remember uh, refashioning one of my sweaters, taking sleeves off of shirts, things like that. Um, and then I get this wonderful idea to... While and this is while my husband is away, I think he had like a three day thing at NASA one weekend. So I'm like, yeah, I have three days. I can upholster, reupholster. No, my no. By the time he comes back. No, don't tell me seriously. Oh God. So and like, and this is like all of it, like the guts and everything. <laughs> I know. That's exactly the face. <laughs> My husband was like, what were you thinking? <laughs> what were you thinking? Did you do it though? Did it happen? I did. No. I did. Oh my um, God. No, <laughs> like I just like feet. I want to know. I put the guts all back. Like I, everything that I could staple and like screw in, I got done. Yeah. And then it came to the cushions and like sewing the cushions. So one, it was um it was like a velvety upholster, upholstery fabric. I was trying to do zippers, I was trying to do piping, and I just couldn't figure out how to get it like all of that stuff to work together. So yeah, the that part never got finished. <laughs> We ended up just putting a blanket over the cushion. Yeah, yep. that makes sense. Gonna call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it was a hand me down, so it was okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think there were three things that I made that at in that time period. Um, but I am glad I took the time to and pushed myself to do. I had made um two silver this for my mom and a vest. Uh, so she had she had cancer. Um, she had been living with cancer and it would go up and down, back and forth, like one one time it's there, one time it's not. Um, but yeah, like the the cancer had made her skin very sensitive 
and she was always very cold. So, um, and usually we would get like some arcuitas made from when we went to India, but they would always do it like really tight fitting, even if you yeah, said, and then the fabric isn't do it always the softest, right? Right. And right. there's so much, they leave so much uh, seam allowance inside, yeah. which is great like, if you want yes. to, like this yeah. thing, but yeah. it's so itchy. I have sensitive mm -hmm. skin. It's yeah. always itchy. Yeah. I love what you make. I really <laughs> do because you use more like sustainable fabrics, more softer, right. and right. you've made some knit salvar kameezes. Salvar uh -huh. kameez, for those of you um, <laughs> don't are not familiar with Indian clothing, is um an outfit which comprises of a tunic it could be long short it could be floor length it could be yeah. like a t-shirt but and it's always accompanied by pants mm -hmm. um usually loose fitting right. and it's got a very typical style but over the years the style has evolved into so many different oh, types of trousers yeah. pleated drawstring yeah. um elastic waist uh, skinny legs flared legs, flared legs you have it but it's just such a versatile um clothing and what completes it is a scarf or a dupatta right and um so but it's just so comfortable to be in yes. and it's yes. and, you know the kind of things you can do with it are just and it looks good on every day everybody you can dress it up you can dress it down dress it up and down <laughs> everything yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't look like sweats. It does not look like, like sweat. It feels like sweat. Yeah. But you have to use the right fabric though, right? Right. right. So that's yeah. great. You were able to make something for your mom. Uh, too, yeah. So she could be comfortable and it's made by you. Right. And she actually didn't know that I was making it. She didn't know that I was sewing. Yeah. So it, was the night, it was a surprise to her for, I think, one Christmas. And she was very, it was happy to see that I had done it had sewn in it something and she liked what I had sewn so that was that was always it was heartwarming for me um I think the next phase was um my mom when she she passed away in November 2012 and then um my family kind of just fell apart pretty much I'm sorry to hear that separately um and then almost a year later I had a miscarriage and so I was an emotional wreck pretty much for a while and um I think my husband suggested like why don't you take some sewing classes you know go out and do something to different something different yeah Sorry. Okay. Uh, so I signed up for a beginner sewing class and I think it was like beginners too because I already knew like the basics of working of sewing um so I made a pencil skirt at that time and then like the the idea of taking a pattern like that's when I learned that there was patterns that you can follow to right right to make something because up until then like what I saw was my mom making the patterns herself um so I immediately started I signed up for the next class and it was like an open sewing and I decided to sew button button down shirt um because I used to wear them all the time like as a in corporate you have to wear, you know, these certain types of right, clothes. Right, right. Um, but it was hard for me to find things that would fit. Like, I always had is issues because I was, I, and at that time, I didn't know why I had the issues, but I was petite, like, short, torsoed. Um, so I had trouble finding things that fit me well. Um, so I was like, why not try something that I'm actually going to, you know. So I made that. Sleeves were again a problem. Yes, <laughs> so I making it always the sleeves. <laughs> um, and I okay. So after that, I think that was January twenty fourteen. 
Um, then later that year, I ended up getting pregnant, we moved. So there was another big break of no sewing. Um, and, but I was a new mom. I was staying at home. I had this kid with me and I'm like, what can I do? <laughs> like I'm, I was grateful for her to be here, but it was, it was hard because I, at that like, project, uh, like software programming and later as a pro project manager, I was always under deadlines. Like there's always something to do, something like a deadline to work towards. And then at home, I was like, what am I supposed to work towards? Because she's a never ending project. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like parenting is, it just never ends. So it's like, Miss, I felt I felt miss that something was missing. So then I, um, w went back onto pattern review. Um, I was looking through all the patterns, trying to figure out what to make. And again, I don't know why I do these things. <laughs> like, um, I decided to make pants. I had never made pants. Uh, was like. Them. Now, this is for you or for your daughter? For me. For me. For mm -hmm. you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, this looks okay. This looks easy enough. Okay. But see, I always say that when um, I, I think not knowing is actually a blessing. Yes. Because if you don't know what's difficult, <laughs> you're just going to jump right in. I, I have a topic on pattern review, which I say being a beginner is fun. Yeah, because we're yeah. fearless. Yeah. We're just going to jump right in. And so there's no concept of what's mm -hmm. difficult. And I don't think anything in sewing is difficult. It's just more seams versus right. fewer seams, right? right? More fitting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I did. I was like, this is fine. It should be fine. That's, that's pretty much how I go through most of my life, which is, drives my husband crazy. Because he's always like this, we have to plan everything out. I'm like, let's just do it. I know. There's there's always a balance though. Like yeah, one yeah. person has to be the yeah. one who jump, <laughs> jumps right in. Okay. And I'm usually that person too. So I totally get it. <laughs> um, I do want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, Be Threadly. Your, yeah. now, this is your website. It started off as a blog. And at, uh, right now you have, you make custom iron on mm -hmm. uh, machine embroidered patches, yeah. right? Yeah. So tell me what, like how you thought of that and what's the core version behind Be Threadly? Um, so it started off as like, I wanted to, when I was making clothes for my daughter, I wanted to make them look more store-bought. Um, right. So I wanted to add something, like some messages or whatever. and. I thought about like buying a cricket uh for the vinyl stuff and then uh, changed my mind I was like okay I'm gonna save my money and buy an embroidery machine um and while I was saving my money um I came across <laughs> this lady <laughs> famous last words <laughs> <laughs> I came across this lady who was making these embroidered like literally art of um and she didn't even use a press presser foot like it was just her needle and she was just moving the fabric around and it was I was like well if that's possible then maybe I can do that without an embroidery machine and I don't need to buy it so I started practicing and so this is free motion this uh, is free embroidery, motion. right? Yes. 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 So I started practicing words and images and everything. And you know, kids' clothes are perfect for practicing. Right, right. right. Because they're a smaller canvas and they don't care. Right, right. You can put anything. They love everything. Right. <laughs> yes. Wait, wait till they turn 10 though. Oh, how, right. how old is your daughter? Because mine doesn't uh, like anything. Eight, so I'm almost there. <laughs> you know, she did wear all the clothes I used to make yeah, until yeah. eight. And then something happened. Oh. Now she just wears paint covered sweatshirts and 
jogger pants. Oh my god. I'm sure she'll be back though. I'm sure. I'm sure <laughs> right Can you make this? Can you make this? Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like, and also, you know, the store bought stuff wasn't really reflecting her personality. Like, she loved trains and she loved construction um work or like the vehicle yeah. um that's like awesome and everything and she loved all that but like you only found those in the boy section you know so i was like okay well if i can make words i could probably make pictures so i found i started making things that she liked like i made a train dress and i made a bulldozer with groundbreaker on it and um kind of like a double meaning there this is wonderful so like that kind of evolved into well everybody likes those things so why not be able to share it and so I started testing on how to do it um how to not directly sew onto fabric and that's where the patches started um now do you take custom orders or do you um uh, yeah. have some in stock okay do yeah. or do take custom so orders? I have I have um I just launched the store in February so I did that uh, the first launch and then I'm actually doing a new collection either this week or next week I haven't I haven't figured out what time um but it's a spring collection and so I'm gonna be like um releasing different collections based on the season and stuff and um so this is the next one it's a great coming. idea it's yeah a great idea. so i've got bunnies i've got a bee i've got a jellyfish um oh my god that's so can i show you a jellyfish yes <laughs> Love this thing. for um by the way i'm going to include all the links to andre's website and social media stuff in description box below if you are watching this on YouTube, if you're on Pattern Reviews blog, I'll have all the links there as well. So yeah. we make so it this easy. is a jellyfish. Oh my God, that's adorable. And so this part is the patch and then like this will be free. Th so, so that'll add so much to texture. Like, get too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's wonderful. Um, but yeah, so, but like the core vision is more of um, just adding fun and positive messages to your the clothes specifically girls clothes since it does like I found it like odd that all the girls clothes that I could see in the store were always like unicorns and rainbows and hearts and that was it like girls have the girls like a lot more than just that yeah so for Dia my daughter we usually yeah. we still shop in the boys section because really um, she yeah so she she has never liked um when she was at your daughter's age she was really into yeah. space and astronaut yeah. stuff so yeah. all of those things we could we even wrote to old navy and um but why clothes have to be uh like <laughs> gendered right you now right um right. so yeah I totally hear you so Oshkosh mm -hmm. was our favorite store to shop mm -hmm. at because mm -hmm. uh, especially the boys section and even now it's just so hard because if a person if a child isn't into society's norm they don't right. you know um necessarily fit into those norms of what the society thinks the girl should wear or boy should wear or yeah um yep. and these type of things really kind of will help like you know so that's great I totally get it yeah. um so what is the one question you get asked a lot um how's your business going <laughs> but that's good that's good that means a lot of people know about it I mean it's it's a well-meant question um it was hard to answer before because I it was it was a slow process um and I think things have changed since I moved, I rebranded to be Threadly. But before it was like, you know, I was taking the odd, the neighbor wants a quilt or I, there were a couple of like custom made orders that I did, um, but it was slow um, to the, like 
it wasn't as successful as people were thinking that it would be you know like the standard right right right, right. but now that you've figured out what your core business is core vision is right. I, I bet it must be easier yeah but and also it was like my version of success was fine like I wanted it to be slow because I had a lot more responsibilities at home so it was okay for me but it was hard to answer that because people didn't understand yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so on the same tangent yeah. how wh- what is the one question you wish people would ask you more um how much does it really cost? You know, like it's fast fashion has changed how people think of clothes. And if it's cheap, it's because somebody's not getting paid correctly, it's a living wage. And it's like people are, when I say that I, would charge 150 to 200 dollars for a dress they're like really that's way too much yeah. i'm like but that's not even a living wage <laughs> so like yeah you can go to walmart and get, get a five dollar shirt but you're like some somewhere someone hasn't gotten paid and we have gone away from like understanding that clothes are actually dispensable or they're not dispensable because they're still around you yeah. know and the and then there's the cost to the environment yes and then the cost to our planet and absolutely you know clothing industry fashion industry is the number two pollutant yes and um yeah. you know i think there was a time when clothes were lovingly uh made and mm-hmm. owned and passed mm-hmm. on yeah. And I think as sewists, I feel that we appreciate our clothes a lot more than, um, you know, just, just buying off uh, stores. Yeah. Um, so that that is that is a very good conversation to have. I think something which yeah, probably we all should be having on a daily basis with, yeah. with our friends yeah. and family. Sure. Yeah. Um, what do you like most about creating and sewing? Um, I like sewing for me is therapeutic. So I can come in here and I can make things and I can just focus on one thing rather than the million other things that are in my brain. Um, I like the challenges I give myself, like, um, trying to figure out how to make a pattern different from from what it's supposed to be to what I want it to be um and I like to upcycle as well so that's another challenge that I like so it's kind of like marrying my logic part of the brain to the creative side and <laughs> that's awesome um, yeah yeah I, and um, I like how you know you just take this flat piece of fabric and you're able to come up with something that you can wear and it's still magical for me I know for me too I like I like taking 2d and making it three-dimensional yeah yeah and um I don't I'm show as much that. as I used to but uh, I every time I finish something it's just such a thrill it is yeah. really for me it's just like wow and the feeling you get when you're wearing it yes like a whole nother confidence booster it's absolutely. Um, let's talk about. Uh, oops, I'm getting a reminder. Um, I think let's we're doing okay on time. Um, let's talk a little bit about race and how it's affected your life and your business. Do you think there are biases in the sewing and fashion industry? Um, have you experienced any um, in your own life? Mm-hmm. And do you want to talk about it and share something? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean. Being Indian, definitely <laughs> race has been a part of this, uh, of my life. Um, we were all, my parents always told us, like, you have to work harder and smarter than everybody else in order to be just equal. So it was kind of ingrained, like, we're different. And 
things have to be different. Um, I never let it become a hindrance though. I just learned to embrace that I was different and that was okay. Um, in terms of the sewing community, I think, I mean, the sewing community is so, so accepting for most people and it's, it's a completely different um, community from other like internet communities, I think. Very nice. Everybody is very nice. Um, I may, like, I don't have proof, but I may have um, felt that there was some bias towards me. Um, like when I would pa uh, test some patterns, like other people would get promoted for those pattern testings versus me. Even though they were complimenting what I was making, like I would still not get as much coverage, I guess, as others. Um, and like I said, I don't have proof. Maybe there was something else that they were looking looking at in order, to, but I felt that that's what it was. I think um, feelings matter because if you're feeling like that, they, I mean, they are true feelings. It's not, and most often than not, we have been so taught to just second guess ourselves. Yeah. Um, but it's important to acknowledge um, yeah. how it makes you feel, you right. know, right. Um, whether or not it's true to others, it's true to you. Yeah. And, uh, that's what matters. Yeah. And, you know, like my solution was to just stop working with those companies and just move on to the next one. Like you learn your lesson and you, you be more discerning about who you work with. So that's just kind of how I've been taught to move along with in life. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I meant to ask this uh, sooner and but I will ask now how when we talk identity is just as it's such a loaded word. Yeah. Um, it comes easily to some and to some it's not, but it's one of my favorite questions to ask <laughs> our guests because I always, always, always look forward to the answer and um, it connects me to our, our guests even more. Yeah. Uh, how do you identify yourself? Um, being Indian is a big part of it. And being an engineer is also a big part of it. But I think I'm at the core, I'm still a maker. Like I'm one of those quirky engineers. My friend and I, um, we were both engineers um, and like after work, we would come together and we'd have craft nights and we would make anything from like jewelry or soap or um, I don't even remember. I anymore. wished we lived closer. We would be BFFs. Oh my <laughs> God. I just, I'm such a nerd. I just want to make stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make stuff all the time. All the time. <laughs> all the time. Whether it's food, yeah. jewelry. <laughs> paint knitting sewing yeah. just I've done anything. it all too I've done, I've done it, it all, all. <laughs> like, it's crazy gardening I grow my own plants uh -huh. from seed yeah hand creams and just everything I get I exhaust myself sometimes yes it is right you know the feeling at some point like you take on all this burden of like yes. I have to make this I have to make this but then like you have to realize that sometimes it's okay to buy I know. Yeah, you know, like it's it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to do it all. It's Even so though you fun. want to. You know, I know. Yeah. Boundaries are hard. Like, yeah. no, I will not make today. <laughs> because I already made something. <laughs> um that's yeah. wonderful. So I'm definitely um, a maker at heart. I need to do stuff with my hands for sure. Awesome. Um, do you have any other interests besides sewing? Um I like dancing. I did five years of uh, Kathak Indian classical dance and I had a blast uh, doing it. Um, I even got my bachelor, I think it's a bachelor's, yeah, bachelor's degree. That's, um, that's they fantastic. call it a diploma. Yeah. So I was proud of that. Um, I love to read. I love to go outside. I like to. Um, paint and draw 
again all the craft all, all the things <laughs> all, the craft. all the things making <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You, should, you should have answered that um <laughs> Do I have to pick just one? Can I pick a thousand things I have interest in? The one thing I don't enjoy as much is cooking. So, there's... Yeah, that's a hit or miss for me too. I mean, I don't, like, I cook when I want to. I For me, I think it's the mundaneness of tasks. Yeah. Really bog me down, bring mm -hmm. me down. It's like, mm -hmm. why do I... The fact that I, you have to do laundry, right? It's not fun, right? If I didn't have to, then I would probably enjoy it. <laughs> like I love to bake ridiculous things, right? Even though there's no need, yeah. But yeah. just because I don't have to, if I have to make dinner, it's kind of boring. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. Um, I feel the same. So, yeah. Okay, this is a fun one. I think we have a few more a time for a few more questions. If you were given a microphone, five minutes, I know, I know, right? <laughs> and an audience, what would you say to them? Or, um, are you okay with this question? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go for it. I have a soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to pull me off of it. Yes. Um, I think I would talk about how we are creating the earth and, um, as humans, um, overconsumption of just everything, you know, and like the fast fashion, all of, and just material in general, like we, we consume a lot. And while like recycling and reusing and upcycling, they're great in ways to reduce waste, we're still making a lot of waste. And I think the best way to make less waste is to consume less. Um, so I like, that's something that I am very um, conscious about. Like, am I buying the things that I'm actually going to be using? And like, even in the sewing community, you know, like, it's so easy to just buy all the pretty fabrics. I know, so it really and is. I, I'm guilty of this. Like especially when I first started sewing like oh I want this fabric I want this fabric I, I'm never going to see this fabric again so I got to buy it too you know like but how long has it sat in my shelf versus you know am I actually enjoying it so I think I would ask people to be more conscious about what they're buying and how they're going to be using what they're actually buying you know like I put a fabric band on myself every year by the end of the year I've definitely bought something um I'm not perfect but it's more of like I'm making this conscious effort of saying I'm not gonna buy this unless like I absolutely have to use that kind of fabric like for example this year my my band break is um I have to get some nude like a uh, nude fabric to make leotard, uh, leotard for my daughter so that's something that I went out and got but otherwise like I'm still making that conscious effort to buy less and use what I'm have what I already have um I think that's great. I think. I'm uh, now do you I continue? Um, do you? I actually want to talk a little bit. I know I didn't send this, um, but a follow up to that. Yeah. What advice do you have for? So I don't sew that many clothes for that reason because I don't need that much. So I'm not yeah. sewing. I've been sewing for more than two decades now. Yeah. Oh, that feels nice to say that. <laughs> um, but you get bored. Of the same clothes right right so right. if that boredom sets in styles change right what should we do if we um, still want to consume less but we're so bored because right you know of the same I mean, there's there, there are ways to like swap with others that's a great idea yeah um 
thrift stores are not always the best thing to do because I, from my research, I, I have found like a lot of the stuff that gets donated ends up in trash or I've heard that too somewhere in Africa or Chile I think um but the the swaps I think would be good and then also like I think as since we make our own clothes we can take them apart and make them into something new you know like I had a dress that I wasn't wearing um I took it apart and made it into a top and now I can I've wear done that too outfit. I've been saving all my clothes for that reason some of them yeah. don't fit me anymore but right. I can easily cut it up dresses are great for fabric because mm -hmm. I can cut it up make it a tank top a top or just right. you know something else so that's right. great um swapping with each other I think I might actually do that for the next PR weekend oh, I might do that I might have idea. people bring uh, one or two yeah. like, pieces of clothes which they have sewn they <laughs> don't want to wear anymore yeah we're gonna do that so yeah. yay that would be awesome um, okay so <laughs> um I think we have time for the rapid fire round okay um we could keep on talking but we do have to <laughs> limit this. <laughs> all right I'm gonna ask you five questions and you yeah. are not allowed to think okay um and let's go ready mm -hmm. okay uh what's name your one comfort food idli awesome i love it um comfort snowing uh dresses favorite movie Oof. <laughs> oh i just saw it again i just saw it again and i loved it all over again favorite book uh, Miss Mabel's so uh, magic school of magic, yeah. Miss Mabel's school of magic. It is pretty nice. Oh, you read it. Nice. <laughs> um, favorite sewing project of all time. Um, I, you have uh, made the yellow anarchy. Yes, I have seen it. <laughs> um, it's too bad that I don't know how to edit these videos because if I was if I was like fancy and all like. Anjori, who does all the fancy stuff on our YouTube channel, I would be including all the pictures, but um, for the real life people like me, I'll be asking you for pictures and I'll include them on our blog. Sure. And I hope you will see all of the wonderful work Anjori does mm -hmm. and incorporates her Indian culture into a lot of the clothes she makes, whether it's making a lenga for her sister's wedding, which was an amazing project. Um, please follow her on Instagram and you can see her sewing journey, her making journey. And um, I hope you'll be inspired by her as I am and thank have you. been for so many years. Um, thank you so much for coming here, Anjuri. And I look forward to what you create next. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. All right. Bye. All right. Bye.